Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This is the last lesson in our summer quarter of Sunday School Lessons. The theme for this quarter is Confident Hope. This quarter looks at God's gift of faith as the source of hope. We are in Unit 3, Faith Gives Us Hope. The lessons in Unit 3 focus on faith as being essential for the hope of eternal life. Have there been times in your Christian service that you became weary due to overwhelming challenges and difficulties and considered giving up? In this week's lesson, the Apostle Paul is encouraging Christians not to be discouraged and never lose heart, but to know that there is a brighter day ahead and that we have something wonderful to look forward to eternally. Get your Sunday School book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, August the 29th, is Be Confident, and this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School commentary is Hope Eternal. The background scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through chapter 5, verse 10. And the print passage is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. The key verse in this week's lesson is, We know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, the New International Version. Here are some questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, what does the Apostle Paul say about our present afflictions and how Christians should respond? Question number two, how does the Apostle Paul describe our earthly bodies in comparison to our resurrected bodies? And question number three, what is going to happen when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. The Apostle Paul wrote the letters 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians to the church in Corinth. The church in Corinth was founded during Paul's second missionary journey, and we can read this in Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 18. It was during Paul's third missionary journey that we read in Acts chapter 19, verses uh, 23 through chapter 20, verse 8, that 2 Corinthians was written. The city of Corinth was the economic and commercial hub of ancient Greece. Corinth was a pagan city and was a center of the worship of Aphrodite, an ancient Greek goddess. Into this cosmopolitan city Paul came. He preached and established a Christian congregation. God is our strength and a very present help in our struggles was the message of the Apostle Paul to the Christians living in ancient Corinth. Paul reminded the Christians at Corinth that they must never lose heart and become discouraged. Paul encouraged the Christians at Corinth as they faced trials. Paul reminded them that they would receive new bodies in heaven and that this would be a great victory in contrast to their present suffering. Paul encouraged the faithful to stay committed to the truth and reaffirmed his deep love for them. In 2 Corinthians, Paul bared his soul and professed his abiding love for the Corinthians. 
Paul is sharing how much he cares about them. Paul reminded the church at Corinth that they must remain vigilant because the trials they had to endure were only temporary, light afflictions when weighed against glory of eternity. Paul was saying, in keeping our eyes on the glories of heaven, we can endure our present sufferings. This week's lesson aims are, number one, acknowledge the hope that Paul, when faced with death, manifested in God's eternal promise. The second lesson aim, experience all in the faith of family and friends who are facing their mortality. And lesson aim number three, develop a growing trust in God's promise of eternal life through faith. As we continue our glimpse into this week's lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are three outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first outline is focus, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. The second lesson outline is forecast, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And the third outline is future fate, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. Let's look at our first outline, focus. Verse 16 reads, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Verse 17, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Key point number one, Paul offered words of encouragement to the suffering saints. Paul had faced sufferings, trials, and distress as he preached the gospel, as he preached the good news. He knew that one day they would be over. There was a song that says, trouble don't last always. And another song that says, tear stained eyes and mournful cries will soon be over. He reminded them that although believers at times face opposition in the work of ministry, they must never lose heart. Romans 8 uh, verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul acknowledged that believers face trials and troubles. He had faced many trials and struggles as he preached the gospel. Paul was beaten, jailed, prisoned, and shipwrecked. But Paul described the nature of his struggles not as burdensome, but as light afflictions. In verse 18, Paul draws a distinction between the earthly and the heavenly, between that which is temporary and that which is eternal. Key point number two. Believers are exhorted to look beyond this present age and world to that which is to come. Paul encourages the believers by reminding them of the temporary duration of afflictions. Even our worst experiences endure only for a moment, as stated in verse 17. Paul reinforces his point by explaining that such affliction actually works on the Christian's behalf to produce a future glory that ultimately outweighs the weight of our sufferings. Verse 8 reads, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Paul realized that he was in a temporary and transitory state he focused not on the present, but on future conditions, not on the seen, but the unseen. The second outline, forecast. The verses in this outline recapitulate the theme discussed in the verses we just read in the first outline. Verse 1, 
reads, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Key point number one, Paul contrasts our earthly bodies to our future resurrected bodies. Our earthly bodies or earthly house is referred to as a tent. And the tent is temporary. And over time with usage, it may begin to sag, lean, and deteriorate. So it is with our earthly bodies. These bodies we have are decaying daily. No matter how much exercise we get or unhealthy food we avoid, sooner or later our body will break down. Paul talks about our resurrected bodies as a house not made with hands. We will have new, resurrected, glorious, heavenly bodies. We will have perfect bodies that will be perfect for everlasting life. Our resurrected bodies will be better than we can imagine. They will be perfect without sickness, disease, or pain. Verse 2 reads, Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. And verse 3, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. Although our humanity exposes us to pain, we can rest in knowing that when we pass from humanity to immortality, we will no longer be vulnerable to the difficulties of this life. And we read this in verse 3. Verse 4 reads, for while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. And verse five, now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Key point number two, the Holy Spirit within us is our guarantee that God will give us everlasting bodies at the resurrection. Paul was not afraid to die because he was confident of spending eternity with Christ. Paul drives home the point that death for the believer is not something to be dreaded or feared. For those who believe in Christ, death is only a transition to eternal life. Third outline, future fate. Verse 6, therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Verse 7, for we live by faith, not by sight. And verse 8, we are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. And verse 9, so we make it our goal to please him whether we are at home in the body or away from it. Key point number one, Christians are to continue to labor and work until God's plan for them is complete. Paul wanted to please the Lord. He wanted him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And we read this in Luke chapter 19, verse 17. Verse 10 reads, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. The believer's ultimate goal, writes Paul, is to please God in life and in death. Key point number two, everyone will stand before God to receive a just reward for the deeds of our lives. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27 reads, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Salvation is not the issue here. God gives us grace, but still holds us accountable to live before him in faithful obedience and service. Salvation is a free gift, but every believer will be judged for how he or she lived in obedience or disobedience according to God's commands. We're not going to be judged for our sins, but for the deeds we had done. In summary, 
Are you ready to appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive your just reward? Believers can be assured that when life reaches its conclusion, God has a more glorious future in store, an eternal future that will never fade away. Having faith in God gives us hope to persevere through life and reminds us that for the Christian, the life to come is far better than this one. Having this assurance, we must work diligently for Christ while we are in these temporary bodies, knowing that God sees and remembers everything we do in his name. We should strive to please God every day. Paul challenged his readers to persevere through life's peaks and valleys, successes and failures with an unshakable hope and faith. Knowing that we have an eternal possession in glory, Paul wrote that we must not faint, but move onward and upward by God's sustaining, renewing presence. Romans chapter 8 verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. We must remain faithful and persevere during difficult times and hold on to our faith. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.